Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. After understanding the matrix concept, its operation, and how to arrange the matrix equation system, let's learn further about matrix. We learn how determinants and inverse matrix are obtained before we use them to detect the existence of a unique solution, as well as to find the solution for a particular equation system problem. In this presentation, I will explain the first while the rest will be presented in different videos. Okay, we begin with the determinants. For a 2 times 2 matrix like this, the determinant of the matrix is obtained by subtracting the multiplication of these diagonal elements with the multiplication of these diagonal elements. It is then denoted by this expression, determinant of matrix A. Please be careful in denoting the determinant. Make sure you write it properly. This is determinant of matrix A. It's not the same with this, which is matrix A or this. For a 3 times 3 matrix, the determinant of the matrix can also be obtained using a similar way. It is called a Sarus rule. It is again the difference between the two diagonals, read to the right and to the left. Now we have the multiplication of these diagonal elements added with this and this. And then subtracted with the multiplication of these diagonal elements and this and also this one. Or we can also calculate this way, extending our 3 types of matrix to the right like this instead. Both, of course, resulting in the same uh, determinant number here. It is worth noting, however, that calculation of determinants of 2 times 2 and 3 times 3 matrices we presented here have both resulted in scalar numbers. As mathematical textbook says, determinant is a uniquely defined scalar or number associated with a square matrix. From the previous slide, it is also important to note that Sarus rule does not generalize to determinants of order higher than 3. So it cannot be used to find determinant of matrix 4 times 4, 5 times 5, and so on. Another way to calculate determinant is using the so-called Laplace expansion method. How does it work? It begins with understanding the concept of minor. Minor is like a subdeterminant of a matrix. To make it clear, let's have this 3 times 3 matrix again. It has determinant as expressed like this. And the minor or the subdeterminants will be M11, M12, and so on, as expressed in this uh, minor matrix. M11 here is called the minor of the element A11. It is a subdeterminant of A obtained by deleting row 1 and column 1 in determinant A. So this is M11. Another example, M22 is also a subdeterminant of A obtained by deleting row 2 and column 2 in determinant A. And here is M22. M33 is uh, obtained uh, similarly. Just look at the row and column dim dimension. Okay, to make it clearer, let us see the illustration. Let's have uh, this 3 times 3 matrix again with a numerical example. The determinant is expressed uh, like this, and this is the minor matrix. Now we try to find M11 here. In determinant A, we delete row 1 here and column 1 here. So this is M11 is equal to 0. Another minor, M22 is obtained by deleting row 2 and column 2 in determinant A. So we have M22 here equals minus 3. And lastly, with similar process for M33, we get uh, M33 equals uh, minus 4. After understanding how to find minor, the next step is to find the so-called cofactor. It's not that difficult. From our previous minor matrix here, we will have this cofactor matrix. And the elements can be expressed in terms of minor, but with specific signs like this. That's simple. 
we just have to uh, we just have to specify the sign and the rule is this i and j here are row and column dimension respectively their summation becomes the power for minus one so cofactor of a specific element will be equal to its minor if the summation of its rows dimension and column dimension results in an even number when the result is odd cofactor of such element will be the negative of its minor Look here, C12 equals to minus M12. Why? Because I plus J here is 1 plus 2, which is equal to 3, an odd number. Similarly, C21, C23, and C23, C32 are all negatives, uh, all negatives of their corresponding minors because the summation results are, are odd. Lastly, we evaluate determinant using Laplace expansion method. We can find the value of a determinant A of order n by the Laplace expansion of any row or any column. By row, the formula is like this. Look at the uh, selected row. It stays the same at row i, but the column changes from j equals 1 to j equals n. Alternatively, we can also use any column as our expansion basis using this uh, formula. Now the selected column is unchanged, while the row changes from i equals 1 to i equals n. Look at the example here. We have a matrix A, a 3 times 3 matrix with these elements, and numerically like this. Then we can find the minor. This is the resulting matrix after we do the hide here and there of the row and column and the cofactors. Look at the numerical elements. Each cofactor element whose summation of its row and column dimension resulting in odd number must have different sign with its corresponding minor element. Now, let's just choose any row or column to find the determinant using the Laplace expansion method. Suppose we choose the expansion of row number 3. It contains zero element the most than the others. After selecting the row, the formula will now look like this. This is the expansion, or this, alternatively. From the formula, we can see the involvement of only the elements of the third row of matrix A, and the elements of the third row of the minor or the cofactor matrix. Finally, inserting the number, we can easily come up with uh, 5 as the value of matrix A, matrix A's determinant. It may take a few seconds only to find it actually, because basically we just have to calculate A31 times C31. Okay, so that's all about calculating the determinant. And before determining the matrix inverse, here are some basic properties of determinants that you may, you may need to know. The first property can be expressed like this. Basically, the initial matrix is transposed, so the interchange happens like this and this. Row becomes column, column becomes row, and the determinant will remain the same. Here is the second property. Look at the switch. This and this. The switch result in different sign of the determinants. The third property is something like this. Multiplying the row with this color number will yield the same determinant as multiplying the whole determinant with this color number. The example of the fourth property can be expressed like this. The addition like this doesn't affect the value of the determinant. As for the fifth property, both conditions can be expressed like this, having identical rows, or row that is just the scalar multiplication of another row will result in zero determinant. Lastly, we have the sixth uh, property of determinant. Just recall our determinant calculation before. We have this matrix, matrix A. Accordingly, we get this cofactor matrix. Calculating the determinant correctly using Laplace expansion of the third row will get us this formula. And the calculation result is determinant of matrix A equals to 5. Now, what if we input the wrong cofactors? 
Instead of using the elements of the third row cofactor, here we use the second row. According to this last property, the resulting determinant will always be zero as we get here. Okay, now let's turn our attention to determining the inverse matrix, knowing how to find the determinant as well as the elements of doing the Laplace expansion to find it. Finding the matrix inverse will be relatively easy. Last time, we learned about the cofactor matrix. One of the main characteristics of the, of, of the cofactor is this. Whenever a matrix is multiplied with the transpose of its cofactor matrix, it results in the determinant times the identity matrix. Transpose of a cofactor matrix sometimes is called a join. To find the inverse matrix, we first multiply both sides of the equation with the inverse matrix uh, like this. Then remember what makes a matrix inverse unique. Multiplication of matrix with its inverse will always result in identity matrix. So this equation will become like this. Cn's determinant is a scalar number. Both sides of uh, both sides of the equation can be divided with the determinant like this. The result is the formula for finding an inverse matrix. Therefore, if we again return to our previous matrix, matrix A, we already get the determinant, which is equal to 5. We also already have the cofactor matrix from our previous calculation, this one. Interchange the row and columns, then we get the adjoint matrix uh, right away. Eventually, we can find the inverse matrix by inserting what we got into the formula like this. Here is the adjoint matrix, and 5 here is the determinant, so the resulting inverse matrix is this. Okay, I stopped the presentation here. Hopefully, finding determinants and inverse matrix is not a problem anymore. And uh, you can understand why they are obtained the way as the procedures are given. Here is to sum up what I have just explained in my presentation. The detection of a solution and the matrix way to find the solution will follow in my next presentation. So stay tuned. Thank you very much for the attention. Uh, see you again soon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.